Hello and welcome to Steve's Backyard Bonsai. I have 11 Dawn Redwoods in pond baskets ready to be repotted into their forest setting. I've been grooming these for a forest planting um, since they were born. The last year I got them really pruned down. I did some bud selection. I did a little bit of wiring. This tree, believe it or not, or oh, you can't see the tree, I'll show you the tree. This tree has the most branching in the most opportune places of all of the trees. So you can see they're very undeveloped trees. So for just a brief recap on how we got to where we are today, I had made a template of the pot and I planned out 11 trees. The outside markings, uh, obviously the center is the trunk. The outside markings really represent the canopy as I would like to see it develop in this forest, but it could just as easily represent uh, the root ball. So I gotta keep that in mind when I'm trimming the roots for this. And here is the pot with the rock feature, which is just suspended on two PVC pipe and extends beyond the lip of the pot just because. I like to break the rules. So I'm going to be collecting the soil. It's going to be in this big tub and uh, we'll get started on that right away. Very excited about this. All right, I have a root rake with a little spade at the other end. I have a root hook, just your standard one that you get in a um, bonsai set when you first start out. And I'm gonna use a, a stainless steel. I really don't like this stainless steel chopstick because it's not pointy and it's tubular. And it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel right. I would like to use metal because I do hear a difference, but I haven't found a metal chopstick that comes to a point and is stainless steel. But I'm trying it out today. If I have to change back to wood, I will. Okay, the hope of these pond baskets, as anyone hopes when they put trees in pond baskets, and I didn't plant the tree deep. The, ple the, the, the trees are only planted about this deep in the pot. I did have roots escaping, but not a lot. And they've been in here exactly one year. The video putting them in pond baskets is on my channel. I don't have things indexed, but it's there. Okay. I'm hoping for very nice radial roots. And I'm hoping you can see this. I'm just gonna step on the other side of the camera and take a look. Yeah, you can see it good enough, I think. Okay, I've got some lovely roots. Look at that. I'm trying not to tear. So I think I'm going to switch to this chopstick, which is doing it very smoothly, I have to say. I'll subject you to about three of these, maybe less, <laughs> and then I'll still let you see the other process, but in time lapse. So, so far I'm loving, I'm loving what I see. The idea of the root work today, and I'm not, these trees, by the way, have been outdoors their whole life, every winter for five years. So their hardiness 
is, is a known entity to me. I'm not even going to have to wash these trees. The soil is just going to flake off. No active tips that I can see. The buds are just beginning to swell. And this is that most developed tree. Most of the trees only have buds on the, on the trunk. You can see a cluster here. Just beginning to swell, not even turning green yet. So I'm going to bare root three trees. As I do them, they're going to go. I, I do have a, a tub of water outside this size that I'm going to put all the trees in. And then we'll do some root work after I bare root all the trees. All right, here's tree number two. Also has a few roots coming out the bottom. Nothing special. I don't think I have to worry about these. These will just break off as I pull the tree up. All right, this one has buds lower down that I don't want to disturb. I was very impressed with the roots of tree number one. I'm hoping for the same here. Okay. I don't dislike this. I dislike the weight of this chopstick. Also quite nice. Yeah. Some heavy work should be done prior to going in, you know, mostly trimming the lengths, any roots going down, you know, too low on the root base should come off and there's a few of those all right let's get to tree number three and then i'll go into fast mode and i'm vowing to have fun today here's dawn redwood number three again roots at the bottom easily broken away buds lower down on the tree that i don't want to disturb And I'm starting to be a real, real advocate of pond baskets. This is my first experience with them, to be honest. And I think they've done their job admirably. I've got some candidates for pond baskets coming up. When you're unpotting, you can tackle the edges. I find that that helps because then everything is rolling downhill and it's easier to remove from the root base. This one's a little more packed with roots than the other ones. But still, nothing will need to be washed. They've stayed tremendously moist. I've had them out on a, a pea gravel base. They were just sitting on top for the entire fall. And, well, for fall and winter. And that's where I took them off, off of uh, this morning. So... That's a good way to winter these trees. And as I mentioned, they are winter hardy from birth. 
I haven't babied these trees at all. I've got eight of them in the ground now outside. I'm not growing them for bonsai. I just want a, um, a little forest of dawn redwood trees to be started in my backyard. And I've got a lot. I still have a lot in pots too. And all of the cuttings that I took from these trees when I first topped them, quite a few years ago already. All of those cuttings are in pots and they did very well. Another very, very nice root base. I'm gonna have, uh, you know, fun cleaning it out. If this ends up being a two-parter, I'll try not to make, <laughs> I'll try not to make it too much of a cliffhanger but chances are that gets created in the editing. I'm not, uh, I'm not savvy enough at, at uh, filmmaking to, uh, <laughs> to know in advance. All right, another very happy root base. The rest will be in time-lapse, so enjoy. my Dawn Redwoods enjoying their, their complete bath. All right, so they're quite happy right here. I'm gonna get things ready before I do. Whoa. I like a challenge, <laughs> but if I'm unable to use that tree anywhere in this planting, I'm thinking the rock feature, then I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then all of these are the cuttings from those trees. <laughs> and I've got some in my lawn too. This is, this is the kind of wild branch that I see out there. They go, they grow up on a, just a little steeper than a 45 degree angle, kind of step out a little, and then the weight of the leaves takes the tips down in the summertime. That's the look I'm going for. I gotta get the pot ready and get the plan in place. So I thought what I would do is the root work on three of these, with the last of the three being the one with that horrible root base. Not that I'll be able to determine anything right now, but might as well take you through a really challenging root. Okay, the first thing I want to do with these roots is just cut the length. And I have I have a, a that template up vertical here for my reference. You'll be able to see it more later when I'm placing the trees, but I'm just going to cut these a little bit longer than what's shown there. And I'm giving you most of mostly a top-down view of this. This is not the most troubling of root bases that I have, but there are some things I want to look at. Are there any roots that are too high, any major roots that are too high? There are some you know, minor ones that I'll coax out of here. All right, so to start off, 
I've got a very big root right here. And part of it, I think, goes down nicely. I don't think that's a different root. I think it emanates from the same spot. But I think this whole root from this point down needs to come off. Yeah. I'll have to clean that up. The knob cutter to cut that a little cleaner. What else? Just these fine root hairs. Really keeping me from being able to see what I'm doing. Once again, I got to keep reminding myself to hold the trunks down low because if there's any buds that are advantageous, I'm going to want to save them. Here's a root that's coming up from the root plane. Let's see if I can find its source. Right here. Is this root too high? If it is, then the one next to it is too high as well, but I like the one next to it. It's a little bit more, well, it's not really radial. Okay, let me go back to this root. I think I better go underneath because some of these I might be taking off from underneath. So let's go in straight down here. You see, I've done some root work before. There's a cut point there, and this comes from that cut point. So that was going down before, it's going down now. I think I can shorten that even further. Okay. What else is going down? This is going down. This is going down. And a piece of that root is going down. And there's something over here. Two roots, actually. going down. All right, that simplifies the root base a little bit. How am I still feeling about these guys? You know what? Even though this one's more radial, I like the other one. Okay. Now let's comb these out again. It's nice and flat. Next, I've got to trim the radius again, getting it more in line with my with my sketch.
Okay. It's going to go back in the bath and I'll get the next, the next reasonable tree. But just for those of you who get off on this sort of thing, which I think is all of us, that's how much I took off. And this is pretty much representative of one year's growth in those pond baskets. So that's a little, that's a little high. And that is also a cut from last year. All right, back in the drink. All right, this, I, I can't, I can't use the same rules here. This is either gonna be part of this planting or it's not. And I would like it to be somehow. Mostly because I came to this realization somewhere down the line to include this in the trees I was grooming for my father's planting. <laughs> Somewhat regrettably, I guess. All right, let's see what I can, let's see what I can do with this root base and maybe, and I'll, you know, I'll go back to the pot and see if it looks good around the rock, if there's any way I can make that work at all. Really. <laughs> all right, so the first thing I did with all my trees was the initial comb out and rough prune. So I'll try to do that as well. Keeping it, knowing that I have to find a center for this somehow because it's going in a group. So this is just rough. Then I want to go underneath and see about lower down obstructions. Those are my nicest roots. Jeez. All right. So if I were to choose this as a root base and somehow feature that, that space, this big fat thing, while it's interesting isn't doing me any good so I'm looking for here we go my old corona secateurs it's gone and it's root base. Might plant that. I might plant that. Hmm. Okay. Put it in this in the water. Let me clean that up a little bit. If it ends up being above ground, I'll get some cut paste on it. But let's assume everything above that point comes away. All these little root hairs. They come away. Interesting but ugly. With the emphasis on but ugly. Okay. If I get rid of this, this root right here, then it will lie flatter, or I could coax it to lie flatter. So that's coming off.
All right. And if I take this off, I could coax this one to lie just a little flatter. I might have to shorten it. Yeah, I'm gonna take the thick part of this root that's going down off. Leaving that. So, now I'm worried if this tree would die on me. All right, let me trim some of the other obstructions. Going down. This one's too long. This one's too long. It's interesting. Going back and trimming a couple of these further back, like all the way. Okay, this one's going to have a wider berth, but not as wide as it is right now. somewhat oblong. I'm going to take that bottom part off. Once again, channeling Nigel Saunders. Thank you for the courage and thank you for showing us these retrospectives where you prove that these methods work. All right. Weird. We're gonna do the rest in fast motion. I'm gonna slow down the action on this tree. In terms of root base, maybe here, but I want the tree to be straight. So how do I accomplish that? I may have to ignore all of these beautiful lighter color roots and hope that I generate some newer roots up higher. This is a tough, this is a tough one. I'm gonna start well, just by taking off some of this hanging chad. All right. So right off the bat, I like this root, but it comes up and a portion goes down, it's black. I hope it's alive because I'm relying on it to be a surface root. You'd be surprised how much help it is to just clear out the little wispy roots. All right, here's something. Dead. 
Well, that's a, you know, that's a fairly nice root base for a vertical tree. Nice and wide at this point, but look at all of this going down. I mean, I got room in the pot for some of it, so I'm gonna start by taking it off shorter. Can I go even shorter and hope that new roots generate? That's sitting better. Yeah, I think I can do without those bottom pieces. Maybe not all of them. That's a little weird. I keep saying trust in Nigel, trust in Nigel. Trust in Niall so Nigel Saunders. And I'm going deeper. Don't worry guys, the rest of these will be faster. I don't want to go any further. That's it for this tree. I'll go back into fast motion. take this to the compost I just wanted you to see how many roots I took off of these Dawn Redwoods and I always pray that I didn't take too much 